Hello, and welcome to Oil for the Journey. My name is Ileana, and I will be your journey reader for today. Today, uh, I will be reading according to the Ignite the Truth reading plan given to us by Bridges for Peace. Specifically, today's readings will be from Jeremiah 33, 34, and 35. Just a brief summary before we get into these uh, three chapters, I want to take you back just briefly to where we were in Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32, we saw and read about a whole lot of land buying, which is quite interesting and gave me a, a something to to ponder a little longer on and study more. These, the Lord had uh, instructed Jeremiah and various other um, individuals to purchase land. And this was not just purchase it, you know, before the, uh, the Babylonians got there or whoever the enemies were, but to not only purchase, but have proper documentation, deeds, etc. So, why did he do this? Well, according to the scriptures, it says that God said that to do this because it was an indicator that he would be bringing back the, the children of Israel back to these lands. And when they came back, they would have documentation that the land indeed belonged to them. So I thought that was really intriguing, especially in the days that, that we're living um, now. Um, the documentation and the property rights, it's, it's all there. And then we need to, to, to look at these things and, and study them, um, I think, a little deeper. In chapter 33, let's um, dive in now to see what God is, uh, is saying through the prophet Jeremiah. Chapter 33 of Jeremiah, God promises peace and prosperity. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison. Now, remember, Jeremiah was in this, uh, this prison in the, uh, um, in the palace. He was held, being held captive, prisoner, because uh, the king um, didn't like what Jeremiah was saying, that um, Babylon, um, Babylon was going to come, that Bernazabur was going to come. And so he had shut him up in there, basically literally and literally to shut him up. And so uh, the word of the Lord had come to him with regard to buying the land and the promises and what was going to happen. And now he's come to Jeremiah again. And it says, And the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show you the great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Oh, I have to smile here because uh, earlier this week, a friend of mine said, do you know God's telephone number? And I'm like, God's telephone number? And she said, yeah, I know God's telephone number. Do you? And I said, mm, I guess I don't. <laughs> and she said, it is Jeremiah 33, 3. And I'm like, I don't get it. And she says, Jeremiah 33 says, call, call me and I will answer thee. So I thought that was kind of funny. Anyways, uh, God says, call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the house of this city and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounds and by the words. They came to flight 
They came to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is not to fill them with the dead bodies of men whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury and for all those whose wickedness I have hid my face from this city. Behold, I will... I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. <clears throat> and I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, and will build them as at the first. Isn't that beautiful? He's he, The consequences are coming, but he's so faithful, so merciful, and so mighty and, and capable that he has told them to buy land because he's bringing them back. He's, he's setting them up for a return. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and will rebuild them as at first. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed, transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Thus saith the Lord, again, there shall be heard in this place, which ye say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate, without man and without inhabitant and without beast. This is so beautiful. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land, as at first saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, again in this place, which is desolate, without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof, shall be an, inhabit an habitation of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down. In the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the south land of Benjamin, and in the places of about Jerusalem and in the cities of Judah shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that tell, telleth them, saith the Lord. Let me just go back here where it says in the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the vale. I took an opportunity to, to look into what does it mean the cities of the vale and some of uh, translations uh, give you the kind of like Google map it and they give you a an indicator of, of what the veil is and it's very interesting to look at the antique biblical maps to know uh, where um, different places are for instance in Saudi Arabia is Midian and that's where Moses went um, or that's where his father-in-law lived uh, so it's the veil here, if I remember correctly, and of course you all can do um, your study as well, is the Negev, the, the desert area just south of uh, Jerusalem. So it says here that <clears throat> the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the south, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that telleth them, saith the Lord. So he's just setting it up, the perimeters of this land that was theirs and will again be theirs after their time of captivity. 
Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause the branch, with a capital B, so we know who that is, right? Of righteousness, the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. That's a messianic promise, prophecy. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely, and this is the name wherewith she shall be called, Jerusalem, the Lord our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel, neither shall the priest, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings, and to kindle meat offerings, and to do sacrifice continually. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, If ye can break my covenant of the day, and my covenant of the night, that there should not be day and night in their season, then May also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, and my ministers. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Considereth thou not what the people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord hath chosen, he hath even cast them off? Thus they have despised my people, that, the, that they should be no more a nation before them. Thus saith the Lord, If my covenant be not with the day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinate or ordinances of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Basically, he's saying, he ordained night and day. And that will never change. But if that ever could change, which we know it couldn't change, then we know that this promise that he's making, that there will be a ruler of the two families, the, the um, Judah and Israel, would once again come together, that they would be back to this land. He will never break the promise or the ordinances of night and day. That will never cease until all eternity. Neither will this promise cease unto all eternity. It's a beautiful thing to, to remember and, and keep very clear that God is the same today as he was yesterday and will be tomorrow. Chapter 34. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord when Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon and all his army and all his kingdoms of the earth of his dominion and all the people fought against Jerusalem and against all the cities thereof saying thus saith the Lord the God of Israel go and speak to Zedekiah the king of Judah and tell him Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. So this judgment that's coming upon Israel, God is already foretelling it. Nebuchadnezzar is coming because Nebuchadnezzar is coming, and the consequences must begin for them, for their captivity to begin and their return also to occur as promised. And thou shalt not escape out of his hand. 
but shall surely be taken and delivered into his hand. And thine eyes shall behold the eyes of the king of Babylon, and he shall speak with thee mouth to mouth, and thou shalt go to Babylon. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of thee, Thou shalt not die by the sword. But thou shalt die in peace. He's promising Zedekiah, listen, go with, with the king of Babylon and you will die in peace. Okay. And he says, and with the burnings of thy fathers, the former kings, which were before thee, so shall they burn odors for thee. In other words, incense. And they will lament of thee saying, ah, Lord or the king, for I have pronounced the word, saith the Lord. Then Jeremiah, the prophet, spake all these words unto Zedekiah, the king of Judah, in Jerusalem. And when the king of Babylon's army fought against Jerusalem and against all the cities of Judea, Judah that were left against Lachish and against Azekah, for these defensed cities remained in the cities of Judah. God proclaims freedom for the slaves as well. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after the king of Zedekiah, King Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people which were at Jerusalem to proclaim liberty unto them that every man should let his manservant and every man his maidservant, beginning being an Hebrew or a Hebrewess, he needs to he should set them free, that none should serve himself of them to wit of a Jew or his brother. Now, when all the princes and all the people which had entered into the covenant heard that everyone should let his manservant and everyone his maid servant go free that none should serve themselves of any of them anymore then they obeyed and let them go now when all the princes and all the people which had entered into the covenant heard I'm sorry, I repeated. Um, but afterward, they turned and caused the servants and the handmaids, whom they had let go free, to return and brought them back into subjection for servants and for handmaids. Therefore, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of, bonds, uh, of bondsmen, saying, At the end of seven years, let ye every man to his brother, a Hebrew, which had been sold unto thee, and when he hath served thee six years, thou shalt let him go free from thee. But your fathers hearkened not unto me, and neither inclined their ears. And ye were now turned, and had done right in my sight, in proclaiming liberty, every man to his neighbor. And ye had made a covenant before me, in the house which is called by my name. But ye turned, and polluted my name, and caused every man his servant and every man his handmaid, whom he had set at liberty at their pleasure to return and brought them back into subjection to be unto you for servants and for handmaids. Therefore, saith the Lord, ye have not hearkened unto me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim a liberty for you, saith the Lord, to the sword, to the pestilence, and to the famine. And I will make you be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. 
and I will give the men that have transgressed my covenant, which have not performed the words of the covenant, which they had made before me. When they cut the calf in twain or in two and passed between the parts thereof. That was like the signing of a contract back then. The princes of Judah and the princes of Jerusalem, the eunuchs and the priests, and all the people of the land which pass through the parts of the calf, I will even give them into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of them that seek their life. In other words, they broke, they breached the contract. And God is saying, you breached and this is what's going to happen. Um, and their dead bodies shall be for meat unto the fowls of heaven and to the beasts of the earth. And Zedekiah king of Judah and his princes, I will give into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of them that seek their life and into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which are gone up from you. Behold, I will command, saith the Lord, and cause them to return to the city and they shall fight against it and take it and burn it with fire. And I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without an inhabitant. Now, this is a stark contrast to what he was saying, what the Lord was saying before. But he's kind of bringing it full circle. Because you've disobeyed, I'm still going to bring you back. But there's consequences for that disobedience. And he's giving them the reason. He's not just saying, you know, this is your punishment and I'm not going to tell you why. God is so patient and he's willing to walk us through our mistakes. But there has to be consequences. And this can be taken into any walk of life. And, and even when, you know, we who are parents um, know there, there needs to be consequences. Otherwise, there will not be um, a learning or an, an appreciation of, of um, God the Father and, uh, and his authority and, and, and um, kingship over us. Chapter 35 brings in an interesting group of people called the um, Rechabites. Now, the Rechabites weren't a tribe. They were, I looked up and did a little background check on them. <laughs> Um, they were a nomadic tribe. And you can say that, that they were a nomadic tribe of peoples. And peoples, when you see that in the Bible, it means nations or Gentiles. These individuals lived as foreigners, like many, many um, Gentiles um, and foreigners lived and even came out of Egypt along with the children of Israel. So that kind of tells us uh, uh, Gentiles or non, non, uh, of non-Jewish descent that we were written into the word even way back then. So hallelujah. Uh, God always had a plan um, for the Gentile nations. So it says here in chapter 35, the word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of jo Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites, and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazah, Habazaniah and his brethren and all of his sons and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan and the son of Igdaliah, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princess, which was above the chamber of Masaiah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door, the doorkeeper. And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups, and I said to them, Drink ye the wine. But they said, We will drink no wine. 
For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons, forever, as a covenant forever. Neither shall ye build houses, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyards, nor have anything, any, but all your days. Ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. So they were a nomadic tribe, and God had provided them um, a peaceful habitation within um, Israel and, and Jerusalem and, and within Judah. <clears throat> thus, thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our fathers, in all that he had charged us to drink no wine all of our days, we, our wives, our sons, and nor our daughters, nor to build houses for us to dwell in, neither to have we vineyard or field or seed, but we have dwelt in tents and have obeyed and done according to all that Jonadab, our father, commanded us. But came to pass, but it came to pass when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, up into the land that we said, Come, let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans for fear of the army of the Syrians, so we dwell at Jerusalem. Then came the word of God unto Jeremiah, saying, this is a teaching moment. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will ye not receive instruction to hearken to my words, saith the Lord? The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. For unto this day they drink none, but they obey their father's commandment. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye hearkened not unto me. I have sent also unto you my servants, the prophets, rising up early, sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil ways, and amend your doings, and go not after gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me. Because the sons of Jonadab, the sons of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them, but this people hath not hearkened unto me. Therefore, saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil I have pronounced against them. Because I have spoken unto them, but they have not heard. And I have called unto them, but they have not answered. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, This thus saith the Lord of the host, the God of Israel, Because ye have obeyed. This is God saying to the Rechabites, because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab, your father, and have kept all his precepts and done according unto all that he hath commanded you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not want a man to stand before me forever. Wow, I am just amazed at the thoughts that, that, that bring me such joy and such peace that this Gentile nation, this nomadic tribe of people, because how they were used as an example of obedience and because of their obedience to their father, 
to their father and to all that was given to them, God used it as a, as a comparison. And God blessed them because they obeyed their father. And he gave them kind of like rights to the land, to remain in the land and, 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 and use it and, and abide amongst the, redeem, the redeemed people. They could stay in the land and they, when they came back, the, when the Israelites would come back or Judah would return, Israel and Judah would return to Jerusalem, they would still be there forever because God's promises are forever. He's forever faithful. But because he's a good and just, a good and loving father, he also must be just and righteous and faithful. Those two have to go hand in hand. Yes, there's mercy, but there also are consequences that are dealt with compassion and no promise that God ever made will go unfulfilled, not one. Even when we have what we're going into now with Jeremiah, where uh, they're gonna go into captivity. And if you read into it more, the 70 years mean something. Notice that they were supposed to do a whole lot of things every seven years, but they, they didn't. And so those 70 years were kind of a restitution unto the Lord, a restitution of Sabbaths that weren't taken, a restitution of, um, of freeing slaves that wasn't done, of letting the land, um, so many things. But I'm going to give you opportunity to, to check up with what I'm saying um, and delight in the learning that the Lord has put upon us. I just want to um, pray now because I believe that what we're reading in these, um, in these weeks here um, really... Uh, is a comfort in the times that we are uh, living, the days that we are living with the situations in, in Israel. Hey, God's got this, but we have to pull close. We have to abide in him. We have to nurture ourselves in the word so that we might find peace, comfort, assurance, and know that he is faithful to all his promises. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you, my dear, sweet, precious Lord, my Abba, that I am privileged to call you Daddy, Abba, that all these promises that you have set before us, not one will go unfulfilled, Heavenly Father, but that we need to be aware and prepared for your, your uh, righteousness and your judgment also, not to be scared, but to be prepared. Heavenly Father, I pray that you are with, uh, with each of the, the, these present today or the hearing of, of these words being read, Lord, that they would find comfort in these chapters, that even though uh, these chapters like in Isaiah and Ezekiel and in Jeremiah, the ones that we just read, where it seems like, wow, that's really harsh. But really, when you delve into the detail of it, there's so much mercy, love, compassion, and grace that we cannot overlook. Lord, I thank you and praise your name and thank you for this oil for the journey. Amen. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you again. And until then, shalom. God be with you.